Okay, good morning all and then you want to pretend mathematics. We're looking at arithmetic this morning and then um, we are back to logarithm, use of logarithm tables, that's our focus. And we'll be looking at exercise 1K of our new general mathematics textbook for SS1, which happens to be page 24, dealing with powers and roots. When we have powers and roots of numbers, how do we handle them in the light of what? Logarithm. This is Mamu with Jarvis, and you're all to an experience that you will never forget. So, let's start. We had said earlier that we are adopting this model for handling logarithm. This is my own model. Number log. And you keep the last piece. For the number of questions we've solved so far, I have not paid attention to this region. In this class, we're going to see the importance of this region. Now, the number you have is what? 5.037 always to the power of 2. Now, you discover that the number is written as a unit decimal. Is that not? This is a unit decimal. 5.037 is a unit decimal. So, what you do now is to write 0 here. Because if I write this number in standard form, it will mean times 10 to the power of 0. So this 0 is what I'm going to put here. Then I'll go to my logarithm table and look out for 50 under 3 difference words, 7. So let's do that. 50 under 3 different 7. I haven't forgotten that I made a promise to do a live, or would I say, a recording on how to use logarithm tables. So if you're finding it difficult to flow with what we're doing, just bear with us. Once the video is ready, I will upload it. How you can use your logarithm table. There's a way you can use it. I'm going to be very practical in that. Having a logarithm table showing you step by step how you can do that. So we go, we check 50. Have in mind, if you're using the new general mathematics for SS1, you can go to page page 251. Page 251 has that. 251 of your textbook has logarithm. It can serve as your logarithm table. We'll check 50 under 3, difference 7. So difference 7 is 6. So that will give me, if I'm right, 7022. Am I right with that? Now, take note of something here. I almost made a mistake here. Sorry, I'm going to do an adjustment. Now, you have a power of 2 here. Are you seeing that? So this will be a little bit of cleaning. This will be 0 0.7022 times 2. Whatever I multiply here, I will put it here. I will see that whatever I get here, I'm going to do or put it here. So this will now be what? 1.4044. I will see that. I will multiply by 2. Whenever you have power, it means multiply. Whenever you have root, it means what? Divide. Power means multiply. Root means divide. So we have a power here. And that will be what? Multiplying this by 2. And we're going to get this. This is what you will now use to look for your anti-log. Not this. So you come to your anti-log. And that will be whatever you read out times 10 is the power of 1. This one. That is part of one. So go to your antelope table, which is on page 252 of your New General Mathematics, and look for 40 under 4 difference 4. So if you have the value, please read it out to us. 40 under 4 difference 4. What does that give you? Okay, that's 2.537. Notice. The readout was 2.537. When you're doing your readouts from your 
anti log table. From the anti log table, the answer is always a unit decimal. That's why you're hearing 2.537. I notice something. The value will be less than. Forget about um, forget about what, what you may call place value system now. You discover that the digit, this is 2537, this is 40, will be less than this. That serves as a check for you when you're really checking your anti log. If you get a value that is higher than this, depth of perception, then something is arguably very wrong. So from this, we're going to have that this is what? 25.37. And that is what your final answer is going to be. <laughs> so let's try to look at this. 61.03 square. Now, this in standard form will be 6.0103 times 10 raised to the power of what? 1. Let's write that here so that you see what's happening. So that's what you should have. So that 1 will now be 1 point. Go to your logarithmic table, look for 61. Under zero difference three. What does that give you? All right. So this will be what one point uh, seven eight five seven times two it's equal to what? So when you multiply that, that will give you what? What will that give you? Three point five. Good seven. Seven what? One for, one for that's correct. Okay. So this is what you would use to look for your anti log. So this will now be what? Anti log equal to whatever it is times to the power of three. So you go to your anti log table, check 57 on that one, difference four. Okay, take note of the adjustments we've made here and here. So this will be times 10 raised to the power of 3, and that will be what? Check 57 on that one, difference 0, and write your answer, whatever you get as a unit decimal. So what does that give us? 57. So you go to your anti log table on page 252 of your textbook, 57 under 1 will be 3724. So 3.724. Now, take note of something, you will be counting three decimal places, and the answer becomes 3724. And that is what your final answer is going to be. The first thing you need to do in this problem is to write this in what? Standard form. Now, at this level, you should be doing these things mentally. 26.21 is like, say, 2.61, 2.621 times 10 raised to the power of what? 1. I see that. So what that means is to be what? 1 point something. So you go to your logarithmic table, Check 26 under 2 difference 1. 4185, 1.4185 divided by, because it is square root, we will dot divide. So divided by 2. So come to a free place in your book and do this. What will this give you? 0 0.70. 9, 2, 5. Is that not? Yes. But remember that when you're using your anti log table, you require four digits. So you're going to borrow knowledge from your approximations now. Digit of interest, digit cost of the approximation. So you approximate this, and this becomes 0 0.7093. So that's what you're going to write here. So this is what you're going to use to look for your anti log. So the anti log will be equal to whatever it is times 10 raised to the power of 0. So what is that? 70 under 9 difference 3. 
So we're going to have 5.121. And our final answer becomes 5.121. So this is what the square root of this number will be using logarithm approach. And the number, the answer you're going to get is very, very near perfect. Alright. Okay, so we have the next question on. At this level, you should do this mentally. We we'll write this to a standard form, which will be three points. Five. And how are we getting that? We move one decimal place, is that not? So that will give us what? One point what? Checking on our one point. Five, 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 seven, zero, zero, zero. zero, zero. Divided by what? Six. Six. So when you do that, you're going to get what? Zero point what? Two five nine. Okay. All right. So with that, you go to your anti-log table, and this is the anti-log. The anti-log is the number itself, and now whatever is there times three is the power of one zero. So what would that be? One point. 8.16. Alright, so that gives you that. And finally, the answer becomes 1.816 as your final answer. Okay, so the sixth root of this number is 1.816. Alright, we're done with taking care of the different elements. It's like watching the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We've been able to look at each character now. We're going to see what happens when we are in a war environment. How do we help a particular character to shine? So let's go to more practical problems where we have an assemblage of ideas playing out. So now we're going to be playing with ideas. And this is the question we have. The first thing I would advise you to do is to write this in standard form. It may not be necessary, but it helps you to uh, times 10 to the power of 1. This will be times 10 to the power of 3, 4058. So unit decimal will be 4.058 times 10 to the power of what? 3. Now we also have this. Which will be 9 point what? 136 times 10 to the power of 4, 2. In that time you've written this out in standard form, I will advise you to do what? Proceed. So in proceeding, what happens? We would adopt our number, log, and then the extra code of there for your computation where necessary. You may not need it. So I write it in 6.23 and that will give me one point and then I'll write 4058 and that will give me what? Three points. Now notice that these two numbers here constitute your numerator. What are you doing? You are what? Multiplying. So this first two you will add. Some books will tell you write what? Numerator here. It means whatever answer you're getting is the new man rate of. Now next, you now treat the denominator. That will be what? 913.6. Are we seeing that? So at the end of the day, this becomes what? Two points. So what do you do? Go to your logarithm table, check 86 under 2 difference 3. Go to your logarithm table, check 40 under 5 difference 8. Go to your logarithm table, check 91 under 3 difference 6, and then put those values respectively here and carry out the necessary addition or subtractions. So, what we are supposed to do is to get the different values. We check 83, 86 under 2 difference 3 in our logarithm table, we obtain 9357. We checked 40 under 5 difference 8. We got 60, 6084. We checked 91 under 3 difference 6. We obtained 9608. That's just the first phase of the problem. Now, 
Because you're multiplying these two, you add up their log. And this will give you one, four, four, five point what? Five. Because you have a carry of one that makes this five. Now, what is relating numerator and denominator? It is what? Subtraction. So we're going to subtract. And when we subtract, we're going to get um, three. I take one and we left with three here. Three. Um, four minus six is not possible. I take one and we left with four. Fourteen minus six will give me eight. I take one from here and we left with four. That will be two points. What? Uh, this will give me five. I'll come right with that. So that will give me two point five eight three three. Notice that at this point, your basic knowledge of arithmetic is what we bail you out. Now we are doing arithmetic. Arithmetic, addition, subtraction. That was the uh, idea behind Napier when he came up with this concept. He wanted to see a way of trying to make, do addition instead of multiplying and do subtraction instead of what? Dividing. Alright? So with that, we will go to our antelope table and check 58. Under three difference three. So for the antelope at first glance will be what? Whatever I get times 10 raised to the power of what? Two. So what is 58 under three difference three? So that would be 3.831 times 10 raised to the power of two. We apply the decimal movement and that will give you what? 383.1 and that solves that question. Now there are lots of variants here. Lots of variants here. The objective of this exercise is not to solve everything out, but to look at special problems and see if you have them, how you should manage them. Okay, so let's pick another. In handling this, I have 2.96 squared. And this is just 8 points, what? 5, 4, 2. Is that not? For this one, I will just put my 0 here. But for this one, I will put it here, 0 for whatever I get. Multiply it by 2 and bring the answer here. So you will need to see why this problem is very important. From problem to problem, I will vary the technique. But understand that. My reason for varying my technique is based on the objective, what I want to achieve. In this setup, I'm multiplying, which means I'm going to add whatever I get in the end. Another student can say, okay, no, I don't want that. Let me do it here, transfer here, and then bring it up. You'll still correct. But I just want to do it this way. Whatever I get from 29 under 6, what is that? 29 under 6, what does that give you? Four, seven, one, three, is that? Okay. I will multiply this by two and transfer the answer here. That will be zero point uh, nine four two six. Is that not? Now, we will now check what is 85 under four uh, difference two. 85 under four difference two. Sorry? 9316. Right. Because I'm multiplying, I'm going to do what? Add them. And that will give me 2. You carry off 1 here. 4, 7, 8. You carry off 1, 1. So that will give me 1.8742. Alright. That said, acting log. When I'm equal to whatever I read out here times 10 raised to the power of 1. So what does that give you? 87 under 4 difference 2. So that will give us 7.486. And that will finally be what? 74.86. When this decimal is applied to this. This is 10, meaning move one step forward. And this will be the final answer to that question.
Okay, we have a statement of a problem on the board, and in standard form, this will be 9.5, one decimal place, counted for here. So this will be what? 1.1. 1. 1.1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 9792. This will be 0.1. 95. Beautiful. You're subtracting. Is that clear? So this will be 4, 6, 2, 0. And that will be what? 1. Is that not? You multiply this by 2. Where is the 2 coming from? This one. So you multiply by 2. You're going to get. 2.05 watts. 28. So after log will now be you will check 05 05 on that 2 difference 8 times 10 to the power of what? 2. So let's check 05 on that 2 difference 8. What does that give you? 1.129. Is that you know that? Okay, so that will give you 1.129. Uh, my focus essentially is to ensure that the steps taken, they are not being compromised. So, uh, while we may have one or two arithmetic issues, let's ensure that the step we're taking is not being what compromised. So, all the errors being checked to their minimum, we expect our final step to be 112.9. Where does that come from? 10 to the power of 2 means what? 100. Account for two steps. Okay, so that will give you this as your final answer. Now, we are up to another problem. And for this one, you have two numbers in multiplied as your numerator, two numbers as your denominator. So I also advise today to treat your numerator first. This will be one point something. This will be one point something. So when you add it, you get your numerator. For your denominator, this will be what? Two point something. We got two decimal places. And this will be no decimal place. Because this is a unit decimal. Once you've gotten this, the next thing for you to do is to read out your logarithmic values. Okay, so we'll try to get out the values now. So what do we have here? One point. One point four five six six. What do we have here? Eight seven zero six. So you add it all. This will give me two seven two three point three. I see that. Add then you have this. This will be two point what? Five five one three. Good. Four six zero. All right. All right. So to add this together, this will give you three seven five nine point two. So you will transfer these answers here. The reason for doing that is just for clarity. Just for what? Clarity. Whether you transfer there or not doesn't take any mark from you. But purpose of clarity, so that you see what you are doing. And this will give you what? Nine. By subtraction, it will be what? Nine. 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 Six. Six. That should be three, is that not? Yes. So that's that. So we come to anti log. And the answer will be what? Whatever I get times 3 is the power of what? 0. So 36 under 9 difference 9. What does that give you? 2.344. Is that not? So your final answer becomes 2.344. So that is the final answer to the problem. That's the much we can take on log reading today. We have, uh, we've just cleared what I may call the first aspect of log reading. There is a part of log reading that tends towards uh, bad notations, uh, more complex problems. We will be handling that in our next class. In the next class, we'll start off from where we stopped, pick more questions, and then go into the concept of bad notations. And 
after the last next maybe one or two classes more there is no question in log reading as it applies to use of log reading tables that you will not be able to solve and i'm not i'm not making i'm not just saying that i'm making a post on that you will be able to solve it because the principles are straightforward and this is my own model for solving log reading you may not see this in any textbook I, my years of solving log reading as a student, I started solving with this method right back when I was a student. So it's not something I developed today. And I discovered that my objective was always to try to get clarity. See, the method is very clear. Clear, it's clear. You don't need to stress your brain so much. You just, like a computer, plug them in. Thanks for your time, and I'm trusting that you keep up the interest and keep learning mathematics. Mamu Ujami signing out. Thank you very much.